Hi, I'm going to do a quick unboxing of the Regal 1054Z. Uh, the box is actually, sm speaking of unboxing, the box is actually smaller than I thought it would be. It's 17 inches or 43 mil centimeters by 10 inches, which is 26 millimeters by 28 millimeters, which is approximately 11 inches. So the box is actually smaller than I thought it was, which is pretty cool. Sorry about my background. I don't have a nice background. I don't have a nice shop. I have a garage, like many of you. But... And actually, I'd heard it was in two different boxes. It's not. It was in, actually, I got it in a big Amazon. I got it from Ali Amazon, and it was inside an Amazon box, and then this was inside, and it shipped other things. It seems I have a, a package of... Uh, it's like two packages of two packages of two probes in vinyl um in vinyl packages and there seems to be the little hook tips in there i don't know if you can see it let's get it on the night there's little hook tips and little color coded bands i you know i don't i don't know if we need this much vinyl for 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 two probes and stuff this is really thickening of course fell uh, vinyl as we know is full of phthalates which probably aren't good for you so we get two packages of probes, not one package of four, but two two packages of two probes. And we get a Ziploc bag, a reusable Ziploc bag. I like that. We get a reusable Ziploc bag, which is good. Um, a packing list with warranty card. A quality certi uh, quality uh, a certi a certif a certificate. Let's, it says certified. Let's see it's, if it's actually for this individual scope. Um, at first glance, this piece of paper doesn't seem to have anything particular about this exact scope. It's actually asking me for my serial number on it. And of course, the resealable Ziploc bag, and we have uh, and we have a quick guide in here. And it seems like well, half of it's in English anyhow, and half is l largely. Time we need the Chinese, I'm not sure. And we have an IEC power cord. And fortunately, the plug is on um, on, on a right hand angle, which is pretty cool. And these things, I'm sorry, we don't, we, I think we'll get along fine without these things. These little, these little plug condoms. I don't know, I don't know, somewhere there's a bunch of plugs just that got ruined, but this, these, this is, this is just silly. And I, 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 I I think uh, they stopped making these. I'm sorry if you make these, but if you make these, please think about making something else because I think we can get off along just fine without these. Maybe if these are outsourced, then, then it, as long as you get them to the, fa to, to the factory with this on, you can pull it off and reuse it. And we have a little tie in here. American Standard. A little twist tie. Also reusable, which is not that bad. Um, thankfully, they didn't put the, the, the power cord inside another plastic bag, because that's really silly. And we have, actually, a USB cable also in its own little plastic bag. Once again, I don't know why a USB cable needs its own plastic bag, but um, well, at least they give us a USB cable. Maybe, maybe they have also a reusable twist tie. Maybe it'll also keep, help keep the phthalate in check. Um, and that's not a reusable and we have, uh, it's the boxing is, let's see if we can get that in. The boxing is actually pretty good. And this is uh, polyethylene foam. And it, this is pretty good because it doesn't break up into stuff. But, you know, cardboard is really cool too. But this isn't bad. Hypothetically, this could be recycled, if, you know, at, at some point. This could be recycled in your, um, in your recycling bin. As long as you can take milk jugs. Let's slide it, up. Let's slide it out here. Things. And at least it's not styrofoam. A little plastic bag. I don't blame them for having a plastic bag. I don't want to set it on its knobs. Um, I don't blame them for having a plastic bag around the oscilloscope. Oddly enough, this bag I wish was sealed better. This is just folded over and taped. I wish this was a big, big, big Ziploc bag. Um, we've got tape on here. And we have the scope. And I think there's a pack of, a pack of silica gel. Also reusable. 
but it's not so good. And we can see it. The scope itself is cute. Um, you can read the you can read the dimensions online, but it's it's roughly a foot by six inches by four inches roughly. Or if you're on the other side of the pond, it's thirty two centimeters by fifteen centimeters by around twelve. It's got a little flip up handle, and it actually does weigh a lot more than you would think it would. Um, I would say this thing weighs at least five pounds. And once again, you could look up, you could look up the, the specs. The screen actually oddly has no screen protection. You don't see any major blemishes on the case. You've got a nice, you have a nice rubber feet back here. Of course, the void of warranty re is remove sticker. And it's got two flip up feet. And actually it is heavy and that, but the only thing is, at the same time, as far as implied quality, it's cool. I like that it has a Kensington lock in the back. I don't know if we can see that it has a Kensington lock. Um, as far as the weight, I know a lot of the weight is actually the shielding. So, and it's very, it's actually very compact. So I'm, I'm liking its size. It's very compact. I'm not worried about it being, taking up a lot of room. For reference, um, if you're in America, the size of it, actually, if you're in America buying a Chinese oscilloscope, um, for reference, uh, the size, the size of the screen is, Actually, just as wide as an American dollar bill, which is really funny. This is uncanny. It's less of a millimeter um, uh, of tolerance, and it's a little bit, a little bit, probably about a half inch taller than a dollar bill. And, um, also, for size, it's as you can see, it's quite small. It's very compact and very actually quite heavy actually for its size. It's a beefy little thing. And like I said, it was um, it's probably a lot of that weight is actually the steel shielding inside. If you look at um, EEEV blog, he's got an excellent teardown of this unit, including reverse engineering the, uh, the the front end. Apparently, we have a little USB port here for a USB connector for um, a flash uh, drive, so you can take screenshots. Apparently, I believe this is for calibrating the probes. Uh, most of the buttons are supposed to be pressable, which feel nice. The rotary encoders actually feel better, feel actually pretty a lot better than I thought it would. The um the membrane switches not as good as I had hoped. This actually feels better than I thought it would be. These channel buttons are kind of you can you know the whole membrane moves. Same thing with this, and uh it's almost like the space between the uh the space between like the membrane switch itself is not pushed far far enough to to the front bezel. These feel these feel strange, but they feel nice. Most of the other buttons feel good. Once again, these are a little wiggly. As you can, yeah, these are a little wiggly. Um, the screen's matte, which I like. I'm glad that the uh, the stupidity of the glo of the of the glo of the glossy screen has not reached um, stuff like this yet. And um, let's uh, boot it up. And the fan, the fan is noticeable, but it's not the end of the world. I'm sure after like an hour, I'm sure that be be graded on me. Um, I actually don't mind that somebody puts their moniker on uh, the screen if it means that it, they might work to taking pride in a user interface. And we have a message saying, "Well, this is our this is our timer for options." Uh, I'm not sure how to uh, dismiss the screen. Maybe push and clear. The screen actually doesn't look bad. We've got uh, the paging. As other people had said, the fonts are small. But this is a small scope too. The fonts are small. They could have been a little bit more bold, I think, in places. Um, this, These are grayed out, but... These could have been a little bit. This these could have been a little bit brighter, brighter. Because I I've gone through the manual, but that's not the same as going through and actually uh, and using it. So I guess we'd want to hit this thing for brightness, and find one out whichever is the main changing knob, which is not this, which is not this, which is not this. This must be the uh, yeah. This is the brightness. Yeah, so it's adjustable at least. I think these are a little dim out of the box. These are, I've got a, a light actually hitting me and bouncing off and hitting the oscilloscope and actually hitting the wall behind me because I'm out in a garage here. This is what I have to work with, and so we make the best of it. Um, the screen actually looks nice. The screen is nice. The viewing angle 
well, is acceptable. Is acceptable. If you have, as if you do have this up, you're gonna lose. If you, the funny thing is, if you have this over over you, you lose the grid easily. The funny thing is, and if you do have this up, another thing you do is put down the feet. If you put down the feet, then you then it angles it forward. Um, it's actually a good looking unit, actually. And I've got a, a homemade power supply, and I was curious to see how much ripple is in it, so we can try that as long as we're careful. They include these little things to make it a hook. So the end of the probe could be a hook, and um, I believe that channel one's channel one is yellow. I, I never had a modern oscilloscope. Um, um, one thing, two things I found interesting is first of all, if you uh, first of all, the old the old Bell and Howell Devi oscilloscope I had when I was a kid didn't have a have this thing where it rotates. Um, the probe itself is quite pointy, quite pointy. There's a yellow cap on the probe that. I don't know. We'll stay on the probe for any length of time. Uh, this, this, I believe, this is the 10x switch. This is the compensation. I do this really carefully, as not to pinch the wire. But the, uh, I'm just very little pressure. Uh, the probe wire is about about three millimeters, about three millimeters, or uh, in inches. So point one one seven inches. And uh, they're pretty thin. The, the wire for the uh, uh, the wire for the probes are pretty thin. There's another trick. If you have one of these guys, we're not using when you're not using it. Take the battery out. And uh, the automatic battery reminder. These these little um, these little calipers are good, but they don't, they're they're um, auto off. If you leave the battery in them for more than a month, it'll probably go bad. And these little batteries get expensive if you buy the um, the good ones. Let's plug in a probe. And it snaps in. Well, that, that part wasn't too exciting. Let's see if we can get down. Let's see. I believe that this comes off. I don't know if I like this little guy. I don't know if, if this is supposed to stay on. This, I had heard. I th I'm pretty sure that this snapped on. But if it was supposed to stay on, it's a fail. And, uh... I, you probably can't see, but way inside there, there's a little socket for uh, this uh, dastardly pointy thing. This does, however, snap on, and now you've got the little now you have the little fishing hook thing, as well as the probe. Looking at the probe, I find that um, this is even shorter than I thought it would be. The ground clip is actually uh, all together. You have. Five and a half inches, and that's I, I know it's a precision instrument, but uh, also for the real world for real world kind of stuff, or about fourteen centimeters for real world stuff. This is a little short. Um, however, apparently you can pop this out like this, and it's got like a little earwig kind of pinch around the end. And I wonder if these if you can get extensions for these. Um, I know the probes are very fussy how they're made, and apparently. Uh, they're made um, like a transmission line, but the uh, this, however, just seems like a simple piece of wire of a complicated thing on it. Here I've got, um, I made one of these monstrosities. Basically, it's an old computer power supply, and um, if, to make it fun, I've got a, I, I don't want to knock the probes off. Uh, to make it fun, I put one of these, uh, these, these, uh, these power switches. Um, and if you, uh, this is actually kind of handy. It's a great thing to have on a power supply because if anything happens, you could just do that, and you could be at the edge of your, at the edge of your reach and still do it. I kind of think that all compete all um, uh, lab power supplies should have it, even garage power supplies. And the top, I've got, um, in the top, I put in a, um, a variable voltage regulator, and I. Actually, these projects, this is these are these are actually a pain to do these projects because there's so much wire to move around, and at the same time, it's been it's been it's, it has been handy. And the video is probably not quite um, fast enough to uh, to capture this, but actually, I can I'm, I can see ripple on this already. Um, down here, we've got uh, not all the statistics, but a couple of a couple of things going on, and. Um, Let's see. The, uh, we've got the um, the current voltage, uh, actually the, the maximum, minimum, and variance. The variance is actually interesting. Um, the variance is actually 
uh, five millivolts difference. Uh, and uh, this is, looks handy. This looks handy. The fonts are quite small. If you're not near, get near sighted, this um, this actually might not be the scope for you. And but at the same time, this thing is compact. It's the smallest little scope. It's gonna have it's gonna have small fonts. And there's a lot of information on the screen.